God is good. And all the time. Did y'all come out of the ark? You know, it's funny for, you know, for a couple months we've been saying we need rain and then we get three days of rain and, you know, I've heard a few say I'm, I'm done with the rain for a little bit. And so, uh, no, it was, God is so faithful and whether in, in, in uh, drought or in feast of the weather. We are so excited because our God loves us and is for us. And so we are thankful for that this morning. And we are thankful that you are here with us, um, looking out and seeing some familiar faces and everything and seeing family together and everything. I'm just so thankful that God brings people together. And that was his whole intention when he made man was for us to have relationship with each other. And so we're excited to have you here this morning. We're, we're excited that God is here this morning because it's not, it's just a building without him. So we want to welcome you if, you if you've been here all of your life or you've been here for all of five minutes. We're excited that you're here. You are part of the family here and we're excited about that. If you're online and not able to be here or if you're listening on the radio or watching on TV, we, we want you to know we're praying for you. We're excited about you and um, we love you. If you need anything, let us know. Uh, we do have a few announcements this morning, um, just to keep uh, track of. We do have Wednesday Night Connection this week, um, and that's on Wednesday night. We have things for all ages at that point. Our um, confirmands, confirmands, we're actually going to have you up with uh, the youth group because I, you're going to be painting, or uh, I know that some of you wanted to do the Bob Ross painting, you know, so uh, our youth group is doing Bob Ross painting this week. Um, and youth, uh, Isabel sent out a message today to bring friends, and so I challenge you to do that, and so, um, and make her look bad in her painting, okay, trust me, she had too big of a head yesterday at saying how good she was doing, so, um, no, we're, we're excited about all that fun, but confirmance, we will not have a group this week, we'll let you be a part of the youth group, uh, for, for the fun that goes along with that. A um, couple other things. On October 12th, our church is part of the Haunted Honeyberg uh, event. Um, we're excited about that. And from 1 to 4, uh, we have an event out here in the churchyard, out in the courtyard here. We'll have bounce houses, games, activities for kids, as well as snacks. And so we're excited about being a part of the community. Uh, it let uh, Isabel or the office know if you're willing to help. Um, also, we are looking for donations for candy. And so we hope that you, you can help out with that. All candy donations are needed by October 9th. Operation Christmas Child has begun here. And you'll see boxes up here. Um, and so I want to encourage you, if you feel called to do that, um, it's hard this, you know, this time of the year. And we talk about it in committees and everything. We, we ask a lot, and, or, or we, we present a lot. And some people feel overwhelmed with that. I want you to know, if you don't feel called to give to a ministry, we don't look down on that or anything. There are many things that we do during the Christmas season to help so many different people in so many different areas. And so maybe God calls you to help in a different area in one of those needs. Don't feel like just because we're offering it, you have to do it. Uh, the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. And we, we embrace that and we're excited about that. And so uh, we have so many different things going on. We have Operation Christmas Child. Uh, in October, we start to do a food drive, a canned food or perishable, non-perishable uh, gift uh, food items. Um, we do that for um, sacred or sacred. Uh, <laughs> so may... Uh, Shared abundance. I always just want to say sacred abundance, but shared abundance. William Covey will get me later. Uh, but uh, shared abundance, we're going we're gonna to do a food drive with that. Um, that will culminate on October 28th. So all of October we'll be uh, bringing in canned goods. If you would like to help with that, um, you'll see that put up here on, this, on the stage also, I believe. Um, so we do a lot of different things, uh, giving different ways. And so I, I was thinking about this this morning. I don't any, ever want anyone to feel like they have to. Uh, and so just let God lead you on that. And we're okay with that. And so we're excited about those things, Christmas child and all the other things that we'll be coming and, and asking for. 
uh, donations also. Women of Lincoln Land Luncheon is on um, October 8th. If you're wanting to go, there's details there in the bulletin. And that's, uh, let us know by October 3rd if you're wanting to go to that. Um, as many of you know, if you don't know this, um, one, of, uh, one of our favorite people went home to be with Jesus this week. Uh, Joanne Leisner uh, went to be with Jesus and her funeral is going to be this Wednesday. At, uh, the uh, viewing will be here at 9 and then the service will be at 10. There will be a meal after. Um, and so um, I am going to ask for a couple things here with that. If you're able, we, we got word last night, you, everyone knows the Leisners. We all know and love the Leisners back there. And so um, they're expecting a very big crowd and we're going to have a lunch after the service for, for the family and everything. And so we need some, um, somebody said young and able bodies. I'm not young and I'm not able, but we just need some bodies who will put some tables out this uh, right after service. And then if you're willing, um, this is going to be probably a lot more than we, we've normally had in the past. Um, and so if you're willing to help with a side dish, a dessert, um, a food item, um, would you please let Kim or myself know? She's going to start calling people, did you say Mon Monday? Yeah. But if you're, if you're not normally on that list... Or if you don't want to wait to see if she calls you, if you're willing to text her or text me, and, and both of us already put our phone on silence, so if you're like us and you would forget by the end of service and say, you know, you, and so forget to, to respond, and you would like to just go ahead and text, our phones are on silent right now, okay? And we'll get those later. But we need extra food. Um, and so if you're willing to prepare, just let Kim know what, what they're willing to bring, okay, right? So we kind of have an idea, correct? Okay. Um, we're excited about ministering to the family during this time and, um, and loving on them and embracing and remembering what um, Joanne did so much. She, she spent so much time in our kitchen. I was being told that today. And um, she just spent so much time down there, so we want to honor her. Uh, family during this time. And so if you're willing to help out, bring a dish or, or something, please let us know and text us and let us, uh, so we can start keeping track and figuring out how to best uh, prepare. Um, we've heard up to 200 people for the meal. So, um, you know, it would be great if we could have some help there. Um, I don't think there's any other I'm sorry, we've got long announcements this morning. But I don't think there's anything else. Would you stand with me? Father God, worship is not about us. And this morning we get to come with a heart that says, I just want to praise you. It's not about style. It's not about songs. It's can I walk out of here knowing that I thank God for his role in my life? So Lord, prepare our hearts for worship. Prepare our hearts for your word, for your scripture, for, for what you want to do. And, and Lord, as I've been praying lately, let no one walk out saying, I didn't meet with God today. But walk out saying, man, God, thank you for being there for me. We thank you, Lord. We know that you're for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us be called to worship together. If God is for us, who can be against us? This morning we come into the presence of the Almighty with joy, knowing that we have victory in the Lord, that all things rest at the footstool of God. Father, help us to have joy in our worship of you today. Worship is not meant to be an apathetic expression of indifference to God. Worship is the opportunity to praise the one who sets the world in motion, the one who hung the stars in their place, the one who conquers death, and the one who has brought us into a right relationship with him. 
Father, help us see the value of you and praise you with all we have. We worship not a ghost or an idol, not an old book, an old myth, or a fairy tale. We worship not what is made up or not relevant, but the all-sovereign God, the living Savior who came out of the tomb, Jesus, and the one who counsels us daily, the Holy Spirit. Let us rejoice. Let us sing this morning, for God is not dead and not done with us. Let us join our voices with come Christians joined to sing from the screen or from the hymnal, number 225. Let us sing. And in the vein of singing God's goodness forevermore, let us greet those around us with God's peace of Christ.
And again, let's praise the Lord with our music and singing. As we stand and sing together, my life is in you, Lord. Number 542 in the hymnal are on the screen. May we be joined in prayer together. Lord God, as we go into this time of reflection and thanks, set our hearts on you. Forgive us of any sins we have done against you. Remind us of your Son's salvation done in our lives. Send your Holy Spirit to prepare us so you can speak to us all. Let us receive from you what we need to hear. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, if we could have our ushers come forward for the giving of God's tithes and offerings.
Father, that's what we want to do. We want to give you thanks. Whether we see everything that you do, it's important for us to remember that you are always working for us. You are always building us up, keeping us on the path that you want, bringing us closer to you, preparing us for what's next, supplying all of our needs. And so, Lord, we give back to you. We thank you, knowing that we give back only a portion of what you give to us. And so, Lord, continue. Take the stuff that we give back to you and multiply it. Support our community. Bring people to know your son through what is given today. Lord, thank you for what... Thank you for your place in this church. Thank you that we have a church that clings to you. We give you all praise. And as a church, let us say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you remain singing as we sing our last hymn? 655 in the hymnal or on the screen as we ask the Lord to prepare us, our hearts and our heads, to receive the message today. Would you pray with me? Father, let us give you the next few minutes to talk to our hearts, to ease our minds, to settle things that we question today. Let us hear from you and not from anyone else. Speak to us so that we know that when we walk out, we've heard from you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Keith Hartzell of Wheaton, Illinois, was driving one day with a friend of his in California. And when he noticed that his friend's cell phone was locked with an unusual password, Pro Nobis, Keith asked him what the Pro Nobis meant and why he chose that for a password. Keith's friends told him it was Latin and it meant for us. And then he said, or then he suddenly started choking up. Keith thought, why would those two Latin words cause so much emotion? Then his friend composed himself and explained that after walking through a deep personal pain, true healing came when he learned that God is for us. Or the Latin phrase, pro nobis. Keith's friend said that after his parents' divorce, he entered a season when he assumed that God didn't care or that God had given up on him. But he finally found hope through these two simple words, pro nobis, for us. You see, when he decided to believe that God was pro nobis, that God had even sent Christ to die for him, he could then decide to walk with God and lay down his life for others. Romans 8.31 says this, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, 
who can be against us? That's an amazing charge and an amazing statement that God put on the heart of the Apostle Paul to the Romans. If God is for us, who can be against us? And within that statement, we see a couple truths real quick. The first truth is no one can stand up to the power of God. And the second truth is God is for us. And because of the second truth, we don't have to fear the result of the first truth. Folks, I have good news for you this morning. I have good news for you. God is for those who follow him. I hope you get that. God is for those who follow him. Many of us live in a world and in, in a state of mind that we wonder, is God distant? Is God away from us? Is God, does God even care what I'm going through? Is God angry with me? Is God against me? Does God even see me? I have that good news for you. God is for you this morning. Would you read with me these words in 1 Kings chapter 17, 1 through 6, as we start to look at this idea of God is for us. Now Elijah the Tishbite from the Tishba in Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, leave here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So he did what the Lord had told him, he went to the Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan, stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the book. Over the next few weeks, we're going to look at the story of Elijah. And we're going to really look at this idea of an Elijah moment in our lives. Elijah is this great prophet who holds great esteem in Israel, even to this day, but especially in the time of the Old Testament and in the time of Jesus, Elijah was seen as a great prophet with great power. But what Elijah's story does is it tells us more than just about this prophet who spoke for God and against the sins of the nation that he spoke to. It shows us how much God is for us. And that's what we want to look into. And if God is for us this morning, I want us to look into this idea that God has a desire to step in for us. God has a desire to step in for us and into our lives. So let's look at some context this morning about the scripture I just read and about Elijah. Elijah, this prophet, is going to go and he's going to stand before and against the king of Israel. At this time, Israel was in two nations, Israel and Judah. And the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom both struggled with following God. And in fact, the northern kingdom completely rejected God and never return to him. The kings themselves were so bad that they offered up worship to other gods. They brought in new religions. They brought in new, new travesties to God's people. They even set up a new temple and, a new, and new idols to worship instead of God. But Elijah's story is not just one of a normal story. In fact, Elijah would go up against the king who was considered the worst king ever in northern Israel. Ahab was his name. And God would put Elijah face to face with this king who would not respond to God. 
You see, in the context of the story, we see God trying to step in. Step into the life of Israel and step into the life of, of Elijah. And this morning, I want to share three ideas that come along with this, uh, with this context and with this story that God has a desire to step into our lives to show he's for us. The first thing that I want you to see is that God steps in to challenge unfaithfulness. We do have that point up there. God steps in to challenge unfaithfulness. 1 Kings 17, 1 says this. Now Elijah the Tishbite from Tishba in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel lives, who, uh, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. To understand all of this, what is going on, we have to remember that the Israelites are God's people. And so he cares for them. He seeks them. He wants them to return to him. But they had started to, started, not really just started, they are down the path of idolatry, worshiping other things. In fact, they would worship Baal, who was in charge of the dew and the rain. So when God puts Elijah in front of Ahab the king, he says, Elijah's going to have the power to call on for rain, not Baal. And we'll see that theme throughout this. And, and in the context, we start to see how God is for Elijah and God is for the Israelites, even working within the unfaithful, trying to get him to return. Look at the name of Elijah himself. Elijah means the Lord is with me. He is a constant reminder that God is not distant. So to all the, the Israelites, as Elijah walked within the lands, he is reminding them, God is not distant from you by even my name. The Lord is with me. And then he was a prophet of great power, being able to call down fire, being able to, to raise or bring life into people who had stopped breathing. To do so many great things for God. He was there as proof to show that Elijah or that God was still there for them and stepping in to their situation. But, Pastor, that's Elijah. I'm not a prophet. I'm not a person like that in the Old Testament. I'm not. I'm not that superhuman strength. And we look at these prophets and we look at these biblical characters and we sit there and we say, wait a minute, I can't be like that. And we put them off on a different pedestal. And I love James's testimony. James, a New Testament author, the brother of Jesus. And he writes in James chapter 5, he settles this argument. He says this, James 5, 17. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. Elijah's not superhuman. Elijah wasn't somebody who we can't be like. Elijah wasn't different in the sense where he had abilities that we could never have. He was a human being. He wasn't a god. He wasn't Superman. He wasn't Thor. He wasn't any of those things. He was a human being even as we are. And his power lied in prayer, he says. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. What James is saying within the context of this is, it's God who does this. It's God who's showing he is for us. It's God who is bringing us back. It's God who has the power. Cling close to God. In a land that had served a, a God called Baal who controlled the dew and the rain. It was God who was turning off the faucets. You see, if God is for us, 
many times he will step into our unfaithfulness and our sin and our struggles to redirect us, not away from him, but back to him. That's why God challenges the unfaithful. Not to rebuke and not to condemn and not to destroy, but to return. Some will choose and some will not. The second point I want you to see this morning is this. God steps in to prepare us for what's next. Not only does he challenge the unfaithful, but he prepares us for what's next. Listen to these words in 1 Kings 17, 4. This is a declaration, and, and, and he calls out to Elijah, and he says in verse 2 and 3, he says, I'm going to send you off to a ravine. I'm going to send you off to the Kareth ravine, and there I'm going to minister to you. And hear these words in verse 4. He says, you will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. The importance of what we see here is that God is preparing Elijah. We don't have any part of Elijah's story before chapter 17. We don't know where he came from. We don't know when he was called. But at one moment he is called. At one moment he is called, and he stands before Ahab, and then God says, I want you to step out. I want you to, to go past the Jordan to the east. To a place called the Kareth Ravine. And there is a brook. And I want you to drink from it. And I have directed the ravens there to supply you from it. You see what he was doing is what he did throughout scripture. And what he still does today. He's preparing people for the ministry he calls. God will never take the unprepared. And say go and do it without me. He will prepare the people. We see it in scripture. Moses was called out and he was called out to the mountain to be with God. Jesus was called out to the wilderness to fast for 40 days. Time and time and time again, God calls us out. And in the midst of this, we see the name of the ravine, the ravine that is used here. And it's so important because the name Kareth means to cut off. And so as he goes past the Jordan, he's cut off from Ahab's influence. He's cut off from the uncleanliness of the Israelites. He's cut off from the influence. He's cut off from the violence. And he's there to be ministered to by God. Sometimes God calls us to be cut off for a period. Sometimes he removes some friendships. Sometimes he removes relationships. He might return you to them. Or he might cut them off completely. But God is working for you in the midst of it. God is working for you. Look what he uses. He, he'll even use the uncleanliness to minister. The Bible, the raven is unclean and Elijah should have never touched it. But it brings him food. It brings him the ability to sustain. God was showing that he provided to prepare us. Some of us feel that we are unprepared to do things in lives. I want you to understand this. God does not call, God does not call the perfect. He calls the unperfect. He calls the unprepared and he prepares them. None of us are called when we're perfect. Because other words we would say it's in our power. God does not equip, the, or God does not call the equipped. He equips the called. And that's what he's doing for Elijah preparing him for this ministry that is going to put his life on the line. And he's there for him. Look at the verse, or look at Psalms 139, verse 10. Even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Even there. Psalm 139 uh, tells us the, re the reach of God. And so we see this verse is a comfort 
to us, knowing that wherever we are, even there, your hand will guide me. Are you, in a, are you in a sickness? Even there, your hand will guide me. Are you in a financial situation? Even there. Are you in a family situation? Even there. Are you in a new location? Even there. Are you in a new job? Even there, your hand will guide me. God is preparing you, even if he's cutting you off from what is familiar to you. The third thing I want you to see this morning is that God steps in. God steps in ready for us to respond. God steps in ready for us to respond. Verse 5 is the culmination. And I didn't read verse, well I read it earlier but I didn't point it out. But verse 2 says, tell, uh, verse 2 says, then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, leave here. And verse 5, if you took out every word before or after leave here and you stopped at verse 5, it would give the perfect ending. And you wouldn't need the rest of it. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, leave here. And look at verse 5. So he did what the Lord had told him. Elijah didn't hesitate. He didn't stop. He didn't wait. He went to the ravine. He went to the Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. Elijah waited and was ministered to as God prepared him and set him up and then sent him off later, as we learn next week. We need to be willing to respond to when God steps into our life. We need to not try to negotiate the standards, negotiate the conditions. Too many times as a Christian, I've tried to negotiate the standards of what me following God looks, at, looks like. So the word of the Lord came to Jeff and he said, go there. Well, I'll go there, but only if, but only if. We need to have the heart of Elijah that says, then the word of the Lord came to him. Go, leave here. So he did what the Lord had told him. Be prepared to respond. Be ready to respond. And then respond when he tells you. But pastor, I live in fear about this. I live in fear of all these things around me. And when God is trying to even talk to me, listen to the words of Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I think some of those words are the best for our, college, or for our high school students who are about ready to go to college and our college students who are right, about ready to go into the workforce. For those who are leaving the familiar, going to the unfamiliar. So do not Fear, for I am with you. How can a God be against you, be distant for you, and say, I am with you all at the same time? He can. It shows the proof that he is for you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right. So is God really for us is the question. The greatest act of God showing that he is for us and that he's stepping into our lives comes with this question that we're going to put up on the wall. Where is your name written today? You see, the greatest act of him stepping into your life and my life is that when we respond to Jesus our name is written in the greatest story ever told that Jesus died for our sins 
Listen to the words of Romans, Romans 5, 6 through 8. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But listen to this. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I'm going to put it just a little bit different. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Jen, can you go back one? Thanks. While we were still sentenced to death, Christ died for us and took our sentence away. You want to talk about the greatest act of stepping in? It was Jesus going to the cross for the ones who would accept him and for the ones who would reject him. He loves you. He showed, God loves you. He showed his love by sending his son while you weren't in the position to pay for it for salvation. Luke, the book of Luke tells us this. However, do not rejoice in the spirit, submit to you, that the spirit, spirit submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. For those who believe in Jesus, he wrote your name in the Lamb's book of life. That means your name is written somewhere to the ends of time and beyond in the house of God. Not this house of God, but God's house in heaven. And if you don't think that matters, wait till you pass because it will matter greatly. For no one can get in heaven without their name being written in the Lamb's book of life. And you can only do that by believing that Jesus took our sins, forgave us, died on the cross, and following him after. God stepped in. Would you pray with me? Father, this morning, and for every single day, you show us that you step in. You show us in life. You step in. And there are times where we don't even see it. We don't see those moments when we're driving that could have been bad. We don't see those moments where danger was around the corner and you had stepped in. But we see other moments. We see new jobs and we, we see new finances and we see new relationships. We see healed relationships. We see promises and we see salvation Lord let us to always remember every single day that you are with us and you are for us you don't just walk side by side you are setting us in the path that will benefit us the most and that you have provided for us so let us walk each day knowing that we are not alone and that we have the one in heaven who has championed us and walking with us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Let us stand and be joined together with our prayer to God. Change my heart, O oh God.
Father, I pray that that's what's on our heart today. Change our heart. May we be like you. Lord, go with us this week. Be with those who have lost. Be with those who are struggling. Be with those families that are trying to heal. Be with our government. Help us to cling to you. To pray for our leaders. To pray that you are influencing them. And be with our town and our community. Let us be a church that reaches. That throws our arms open to whoever needs to come in the door. And even walks people in. We thank you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. God bless and have a great night.